I go to you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The leaves or the dregs were a settlement from the smashing of the grapes. You know, the, 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 the skin or, or, you know, the seeds or anything. No, those were the impurities. How many here like or, uh, pulp orange juice? Ooh, yeah. A few of us, some of us, you know, the majority of people, I don't think like it. I love it. You know, and then when, you know, so so now they have pulp free and they have pulp. You know, <laughs> so, you know, but the thing is, this is that, you know, that, that pulp, when you, when you get that orange juice, it all settles in the bottom. So you have to shake it up to get it going. But here, this one was talking about, man, that the, the, the dregs, the, 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 the leaves, amen, were, were the byproduct of the smashing of the grapes. And what happens is that in order for you to get the cleanest, uh, cleanest uh, 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 drink possible, it has to be poured out over and over and over and over again. One thing, amen, uh, that if, if you ever want to do this, take the pulp orange juice and the pulp free orange juice, take a blind taste test, which is hard to do because you know it's pulp. Huh. <laughs> but really be honest about it and see which one is stronger. Because the pulp is stronger. Yeah. Why? Because there's pulp in it. Oh. Okay? This is what was happening, amen, to the wine, to the wine, to the grape juice that was settled into the, along with the dregs. It tasted too grapey. You ever had something to drink? My wife is very sensitive with sugary drinks. If it's too much sugar, she has to water it down. Now, my son-in-law, Darnese, makes the Kool-Aid. To him, the sweeter the better. Boy, before, he'll make a, a, a gallon of Kool-Aid with two bags of sugar and say, perfect. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just a matter of taste, amen. But the, what he's talking about, man, is that that taste becomes too strong. You're not getting it pure enough. You know, it's too strong. Because why? Because all that junk is still there. So now it has to be poured out. Has to be poured out, amen. And uh, what happens, man, when it gets poured out, it has to be carefully poured out. So the, uh, the the dregs, amen, or the leaves stay in one section. Now, not all of it will stay because you still got a little bit more. That's why it's poured out from, from vessel to vessel. And then it would sit. The sediment would cause it to drink uh, uh, to to go down, and then it'll be poured out again. Now, when the Bible says here, just a little background of the scripture. When it says here, amen is that when it is poured out from vessel to vessel, that means then if the sediment with it is strong, then when it's poured out, it gets weaker. But as it gets weaker, grape juice wise, it gets purer. You and I, amen, are vessels. Can you say amen? First Thessalonians 4.4 4 says, each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. We are vessels, amen. So God has to pour us out, pour, pour into us, pour out of us. And we have to understand, amen, that the pouring out or the pouring in is to make us weaker in our own ways, but pure in his ways. More stuff of our stuff is coming out. Can you say amen? amen. And more of him is coming in. And I'm going to... Uh, do uh, you know a, a little illustration? Not an illustration, amen. But about the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. See, there's things that happen in the process. In the process, amen. In the process, there's waiting in the process. Waiting. When it's poured into one vessel, it has to stay and settle. It has to wait. And waiting at times, man, that's the hardest thing to do. You ever know that you had to do something the very next day? And you wish it was already. That day, <laughs> you know, if you play the game, you know, you have a football game, you have basketball or a test, man, you study, you cram for, you're supposed to study for two weeks, but you only study for two, two hours, <laughs> you know, you know, and you wish it was over, it, you wish, oh man, I would, it, it would be done. We have this thing called, you know, uh, in, in the military, we call the ready room. And what it is, or, or you know, you would go in and you would get your final instructions. They would say, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. You know, launch is at, you know, at 10 o'clock at night. And it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So now you're waiting. You're waiting. You're trying to eat. You're trying to rest. You're trying to do everything you can. You read a book, whatever it is. You know, but you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and you're playing the situation over and over in your mind. You're thinking, man, of all the things that could go wrong. 
You never think of anything that's going to go right. You're always thinking of going go wrong. And then all of a sudden, man, you, you think of something. The waiting at times, man, makes you so anxious that you start tripping up. Yeah. Your mind starts wandering about other things. Like not going. Yeah. Not doing it. Because now you're thinking, man, man, this is too much of a stress. You know what I get called in? Uh, churches call and say, man, can you come and preach for us? And man, and if it's overseas or anywhere... Sure, and then by the time I book it for the time that I need to go, there's that waiting period. And I try to push it away from my mind because if I have it cut, set into my mind, I get too nervous about thinking about that situation that I'm not concentrated on anything else. When people ask me, are you nervous yet? No, not yet. It's too soon. Yeah. It's way too soon. If I do it now, I'm in trouble. So by the time, amen, I get the jitters, it's actually the morning that I wake up and I realize I have to get on that plane. Hey, this is really happening. And we're in the air, and I'm like, hey, this is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get out of the plane. There's no, there's no cord to pull. Hey, I want to get off this stop. I mean, the plane doesn't stop when you're gone. And then I land in a foreign country, and I'm going, oh, this is really happening. What am I doing in Honduras? <laughs> they got these names of these cities I can't pronounce. Hey, <laughs> Go to Honduras. Look at the street signs. What the heck is that? <laughs> and then, and then we're over there, man. We're, and, and, you know, those of us that went, man, we went over there, man. We're sitting there looking at the news, and their news is raw, folks. The guy's body is still in the ground, and there's a news a camera. We found his body here two hours ago. <laughs> two hours ago, can somebody get a sheet and cover up, man? <laughs> You know, and they're still looking, and they're like, man, they're, it's wrong, man. They don't say, hey, the, the next, you know, what, this, you may find this disturbing. No, they, she, they show the guy getting shot. <laughs> Should we show it again? No. <laughs> Why? Because I have to go and preach somewhere. <laughs> you know the reality is in that waiting time, in that waiting time, you know, praying, man, and what I pray, Lord, what do you want me to say to them? And how do you, man, Lord, didn't you take charge and not do my part in studying that this is what... This is what I want you to say. I said, okay, but it's up to you to say it. Any preacher knows, amen, that when we do our study, we do our study, man, we get it. But it's up to the Lord and how he wants to say it. He does the planning. We just do the process. And here we are, amen, the waiting in the scripture, man. The wine had to wait for the drinks to settle. It's an active wait. And this is where a lot of people, man, mess up because they think it's a, it's a passive wait. What are you doing? I'm just waiting on God. Well, what are you doing while you're waiting on God? Nothing. Just waiting on God. What can you do to wait? Well, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. One thing, Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, and supplication is a type of prayer. You know, supplication is when you go over, oh, man, somebody and say, you know, hey, you need to help me out on this, man. You need to help me out on this. Lord, you need to help me out on this. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going through some financial struggle right now. You need to help me out on this. It's an amazing thing that Christians need money, but that's one of the last things they ever pray for. And then when God shows them how to get it, it's the very last thing that they do. Lord, I need a miracle in my finances. Give. Lord, you don't hear me. I said, I need a miracle. I need some finances. And the Lord's saying, yeah, you're working under my economy. How you get finances from me is that you give. How is that possible? Because you're just asking for a miracle. If you didn't want a miracle, God's going to say, okay, just go to work. There it is, man. Here you go. Go. Minimum wage. Go, man. There, money. You happy? Or do you want to see a miracle? I don't want to see an explosion. Then give. How is that possible? <laughs> Apparently, you haven't given. Because anyone who has given knows, amen, you cannot give God. Pastor Jesse, amen, from uh, World Harvest, I believe, amen, he's out in uh, Baldwin Park. One year, I took a team of 10 people, Christina, Philippines, when you went the first time, was it 10, 13, about 13, 13, 14 people. Nobody had a job except me and two other guys. That's 10 people that did not have a job. But one thing that all of them, all ten of them knew what to do, they knew how to pray, they knew how to fast, they knew how to give. Whatever came in, they gave. 
Whatever came in, they believe in God. They pray, they fast, and go, make a way. Man, I really want to go, make a way, make it. Man, some of you, man, God has challenged you to go overseas. What have you been doing about it? Nothing. It's a process. It's a process. Process of you waiting, a process of you while you're waiting to get there, a process, amen, of you giving, a process of you not just waiting passively, but actively. It says, pray and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? You, what, what does that mean? You keep your mind while you're waiting, because believe me, church, I've been to battles, amen. I've been, man, where I had to wait and wait, amen. At, I think I was 20 years old. 20 years old, I was in charge of five individuals. Then they gave me a six. Said, here you go. <laughs> I looked at my... I looked at him, my, the, the, the officer in charge, I looked at him and said, man, are you, are you serious? He says, yeah, man, don't, don't shortchange yourself. You're capable. Have you just seen me in the corner twiddling my thumbs, biting my nails, man, and going, mm, 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 mm. that does not sound like I'm capable. That sounds like I'm insane. <laughs> yep, you're capably insane. <laughs> but here's one thing, amen. He says, but you know what? I admire the way you wait. Some people wait. And wait and wait and do nothing while they're waiting. While you're waiting, you pray. While you're waiting, you fast. While you're waiting, you give. While you're waiting, you're still active. While you're waiting, you're attending church. While you're waiting, amen, you're just moving into things of God and flowing into things of God. Yes, you're getting hit, hip, uh, right and left, left and right, up and down, sideways, amen, but it doesn't matter. You're still waiting on God. You're unmovable, man. You're not take, going anywhere. There is nowhere for you to go. You are in the waiting room. You are in that place, man, where now God is pouring into you on how you handle certain situations. Why? Because in the waiting room is where really, where you learn how to counterattack the enemy's attack. I'm serious, man. You know, sometimes, man, uh, man, if you've ever been into a fight, ever been into a fight, a good fighter will always play their fight in their heads. Why? Because, man, they do things. If you see a boxing man, they'll set a, the other boxer up for what they want to happen. That other boxer has to realize it's a setup so I can't go there. So I'll back up because he's expecting me to come forward. Do you understand that in the waiting room you are trying to get to the place, amen, where God is teaching you strategic things that when they happen, you know how to react. How do you become a good fighter? It's repetition. It has to be second nature. Somebody punches me in the face, I'm not going to go. You know, I have to learn how to move back. I have to learn how to move sideways. I have to learn how, you know, most fighters, amen, if you see a street fight, they'll just stay in the middle going. And maybe get a lucky punch in. But the one who's really a man, will let them just do that and just wait, man. Just not. I'll wait. Because sooner or later, they're going to stop punching. And while they stop punching, here it comes. So God is trying to get us somewhere while the process in waiting, waiting. There is pain in the process. Can you say amen? Amen. There's definitely pain in the process. Everybody hates suffering. Amen. But in fact, pain changes people. Pain demands to be acknowledged. Yeah. When you stub your toe, you just don't say, oh, <laughs> yes, the my toe. What a glorious evening. I'm going to the bathroom. That's took my time. No, it demands to be acknowledged. Rachel, put that chair there. Put that wall there. <laughs> now I say, man, Tom, Carmel, whose toy is that? Carmelo or Lila's? <laughs> it, it demands to be acknowledged. It's not meant to make us weak, it's meant to make us stronger. I heard one man say, amen. Well, actually, it was a billboard. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. When Christians go through pain in life, it helps us to get back on the path of righteousness. It helps us, amen. We lose self-reliance and turn to the only one, which is God, who can help us. Sometimes there's things that you go through, man. Nobody else has words. Nobody else 
has anything to say, to do. There is no, no scripture that can be given that will make sense to you because pain is demanding to be acknowledged. Hey, this hurts. Hey, I didn't think, man, he was my buddy. He was my brother in Christ, man. What, what in the world did I do to make him stab me in the back like that? What do I do from here? How do I react from here? Where do I go from here? Oh, I remember in the waiting room, I prayed, and this is what God told me to do. And now, while that was a, a, a part of my life in this process, pain sets in, and now I know. Because now I know, amen, that I can be strong in this matter. You see, you can't go too long, amen, with holding everything inside you and not forgiving. And not letting go. Think of pain while in, in weightlifting. It might hurt, but you're becoming stronger in the process. And the more weights equal more pain. More pain equals more strength. You're building muscle. You're building tolerance. You're building everything up, man. You, you know, now it's no longer those little demons that come after you, man, and, and shoot pea shooters in the back of your face or in the back of your head, making you turn around. Now these guys are coming after you with bows and arrows. No, that's not going to work anymore. We've got to do more. Why? Because he's getting stronger. Are you with me? Yes, you can't say amen. Say ouch. You can't say ouch. Don't go to sleep. I'll throw something at you. <laughs> Almost done. Pain is temporary. Quitting lasts forever. Pain does not show up in our lives for no reason. It is, some, it is a sign that something needs to change. What, stubbing your toe in the middle of the night? There's something needs to change? Yes, it's called moving the chair. <laughs> Turn on the light. Know where you're going. <laughs> yes, there's something that needs to change. Change. One of the main ways we move from abstract knowledge about God to a personal encounter with Him as living reality is through the furnace of affliction. Mm -hmm. Tim Keller said that. One of the more, one of the main ways to you know, in other words, you know of God, you don't really know God, but when you have that personal encounter, it's through what? It's through the furnace of affliction. Is when Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace. They got that personal thing with God. Is when John, Daniel went to the lions. And is when, when the disciples, amen, were in the boat and realized, amen, that this man just stood up and said, Peace be still. But they know, man, who is this guy? <laughs> is when they saw, it's when Lazarus was raised from the dead, amen. Often we endure trials seeking God's deliverance from, from them. But suffering is painful for us to endure. Or those who love endure. While our instant plea trials, remember that even in the midst of a trial, God is working through it. Can you say amen? Amen. So think of it as weightlifting. Think of it, amen, that you know the more the weights we have, the more pain, but you know what? The stronger you are. Second Corinthians 4, 16 and 18, that's why we are not discouraged. No. Even if outwardly we are wearing out, inwardly we are being renewed each and every day. This light, temporary nature in our suffering is producing in us everlasting weight of glory far beyond any comparison. Because we do not look for things that, cannot, that can be seen, but for things that cannot be seen. For things that can be seen are temporary, but things that cannot be seen are eternal. There's pain, but pain only for a moment. Quitting lasts forever. I have the sermon called Don't Ring the Bell. And it is during uh, special forces training. And I believe it's all, all the Army, Navy, Air Force. I believe the overseas when they just tell you men just to get out. But there's a bell, the bell that you ring when you've had enough. And you ring it, and then you just drop all your stuff, and then you leave, you go. But forevermore, amen, you'll, you'll be the one that you'll remember. I wonder what if I would have just stuck it out another day. I wonder if I would have just done another day. I wonder what would have happened if I would have just said, you know what? <laughs> because you know, you know when they do that? At the end of the day. You line up at the end of the day before you're dismissed and you sit there and they, they, they mess with you. We're going to do this again tomorrow. It's going to be tougher tomorrow. Those of you that don't want to face it, man, go ahead and ring that bell. Let, me be, let it be music to my ears. Come on. Because tomorrow is going to be a more difficult day than you can ever imagine. 
Tomorrow, I'm going to make you cry. Tomorrow, and here you are. But it's the end of the day, guys. You made it. And yet, there are some people that go, no, can't do it. And that's the end of the day. And now they go back and go, man, I wonder if I would have stuck it out. I wonder if I would have made that day. And do you know, after you ring that bell, even though you say, man, you change your mind, they will tell you, can't go. You rang it. We can't take you back. Now you can apply for it again, but it's going to take you a while. <laughs> and you have to start all over again. 2 Corinthians 7, 8, and 11 says, Now I'm not sorry that I've sent a severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful for you for a little while. But I love this part. He says, Now I'm glad that I sent it because it hurt you, but because the pain it caused you, you repented. You repented and changed from your ways. You repented and changed from your ways. Sometimes, amen, you know, God went through times of not even affliction, but through times, amen, of correction. We think, man, he doesn't like us. He doesn't like us. But it's the change that he wants in you. There's pain in change. Why? Because there's growing pains. You know your tantrums that you throw? Why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? Why can't I make me a huh, huh, huh. <laughs> So what if I'm a diet? Why can't I have a cheeseburger? Oh, think about what you just said. I want to serve the Lord with all my heart, but why can't I go and get drunk? Wow. Oh, yeah. Wait, babe, right? Why can't I go get high? I mean, after all, marijuana is legal. Go smoke all the poison ivy you want. Huh. Oh, no? No. I don't drink to get drunk faster. I just, I just, I just, I just drink to get the, to take the edge off. To take the edge off. To take the edge off. <laughs> so you drink till you get buzzed. Yeah. Not drunk, but buzzed. That's the edge off, right? Because I don't know about you, I mean, I used to drink, and I'll tell you what, one beer did not take any edge off. Huh. If anything, it said, there's five more in the cooler. <laughs> People ask, why can't you drink? I say, I can. I just choose not to. Why not? Because there's no such thing as one beer with me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, being, I'm being real. I'm, 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 I, I don't, I'm not a social drinker. I cannot be a social drinker. I'm going to pay $10 for a shot. You think I'm only going to take one shot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just being real. I mean, and a lot of, you know, hey, you know what? A lot of Christians say, well, you know, well, you know, I can, I can just take a sip here and there. I say, Play with fire. Play with fire. Because one day you're going to slip up. And if you're a father or if you're a mother, amen, you got children, they're looking at you and going, okay, dad and mom, mom and dad say it's okay once in a while. And then that once in a while becomes, becomes twice in a while. Twice in a while becomes three times in a while. And then it becomes every time you want to take the edge off. Go ahead and just take the edge off. There's pain. There, there's pain in the, cha in, in the process. There's things taken out of you in the process. There's things that are, that are man, they're being pulled away from you that you don't need in the process. There are things, amen, that are just taken from you and saying, man, God is saying, just give me that. Give me that. Why are you hanging on to it? Why are you hanging on to it? Just give it to me. Real quick, man, there's change in the process. Romans 12, amen, states, be not conformed to this world. But be transformed with the renewal of your mind. There's change. There has to be change. You know, if you are psycho from the neighborhood, stop calling and introducing yourself as brother psycho to the people in church. <laughs> there's change. There's one time, man, I was with my buddy and goes, hey, there's Capone. I said, who the heck is Capone? <laughs> no, no, I think he said, he said, there's Jerry. I said, who the heck is Jerry? Jerry, you know Jerry, man. We, Jerry. And I'm looking at the guy going, Capone? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know his name? I never knew his name. I mean, I always knew him as Capone. Amen. The reason why they call him Capone is because he always wore a hat. One of those fedoras that Capone wears. So that's why I got his nickname, Capone. I said, I never knew his name was Jerry. Man, I have people coming to church. Man, hey, brother, what's your name? Man, no, they call me Turtle. No, no, no. I don't want to know your name, brother. What is your real Oh, Angel. Why do you just call yourself Angel, bro? Why? Because there's a change in you. You're no longer that individual that used to rip and run, amen, dip and dodge. 
Hiding behind a dumpster, amen, because you're fixing it. You know, doing those crazy things. You know, you're not that same CEO, amen, that cheats on his taxes. See, we hit everybody. You say, look, we're all not, all of us here are not gang members. All of us here are not drug addicts. All of us here are not, are not alcoholics, man. Some of us here, man, we're educated. Some of us here, we're, we're students. Some of us here, man, just, you know, you, you, you have to understand that there, all of us are in need of a Savior. Yes. And all yes. of us are in need of change. All of us are in need of this process of change. Yes. So be it, amen, that he had to take away this, that he had to take away your old identity, amen, and took away your Jacob and gave you a name Israel. But in the back of your mind, you'll always be known as Jacob. Why? That humble you? Because God is still your God. Amen. Where you call Jacob or where you call Israel. Abram went to Ab from Abraham. Sarai went from Sarah. Your names are changed. Not to protect the innocent because we're all guilty. But God wants to give you a new identity because now, now you are not who you are. You were, you were before. Before, you used to go to restaurants and say, man, if they didn't get your order right, man, you know, you didn't want to cause any trouble, man. You were just like, oh, I'm cool. But now you can actually excuse me, man, I ordered out uh, over easy. These are scrambled. Oh, sorry about that. We'll get you that right away. There's a change in you. There's change in the process. There has to be a change in the process. There has to be. Why? Because... You can't help but change when God works in you. Amen. Just, uh, you know, he, he was bringing out a point in giving. Amen. Before, man, you know, he, man, some of you, man, you would squeak if you had to open up your wallets or your purses, man. <laughs> squeak. You had to pry that thing up with a, man, with a crowbar, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all going to get something to eat. You want to go with this? Sure. Everybody in puts 10 and you put 250. I got the tip. What the heck? There was this one brother, amen. We all had hit a ride, went to El Centro, amen. Everybody was giving 20 say He gives a $5 bill. And I'm looking at him going, that'll get you to the next block. <laughs> There's a change. We are no longer those individuals, amen. We become liberal. We become kind. Yes. We become long suffering. We're becoming, amen, having the fruits of the spirit of love, joy, of temperance. We're no longer blowing up, amen. We're no longer trying to mad dog everybody that walks up when walks by us. You know. I don't know. Everybody when they look at me, man, they just look at they some people may just want to mad dog me right away. Now, I don't mean anything by it, but I'm just looking at them, you know, and they're looking at me and I'm like, maybe I should look away because this guy doesn't look like he wants to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm saying that. So, you know, give them the hand and just keep going. <laughs> That's what you ever get it. All the time. But there is a time, church, man, there has to be a change. Amen. And if God really fights my battles, man, I pray, Lord, if he messes with me, man, break his teeth. Yeah. Lord, you see what he did? He tried to harm me. Man, don't let him enjoy burgers for a while. <laughs> he looks like a drinker, Lord. Every time he drinks, give him mad, mad diarrhea, Lord. Explosive. Doesn't know what hit him. <laughs> I'll let Mikey explain that one to you. <laughs> There's a change. Yes. And sometimes change is painful. It hits your pride. My wife and I were going to the mall one holiday season. And if you've ever been to the mall, you know there's a stop sign going this way, but not a stop sign going to the mall. And this guy just runs around and he starts cussing me out. So I had my wife with me and I said, man, yeah, you had a stop sign. No, you blame yourself. You blame I'm like, Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me before. I had my niece with me, Savannah. She was a baby. She was riding with we went. We were going somewhere. And this guy, I don't know what he was doing, but he wasn't making the turn. So I went around him to make the turn. All of a sudden, he starts getting crazy. 
I forgot that my niece and my wife were in the car with me. I rolled down the window, pull over! <laughs> man, I pulled over, man. I looked at him, man. He drove off, and I'm like, I was like in the car and I see my wife and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me for you, I fear her, no, I don't want to beat you up, man. <laughs> I said, man, my niece is in the car, man. You, you look at you here. <laughs> That's what she got but it, change hurts, I man. There, there, there's, there's something, amen. And, 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 and calling, amen. Let me break it down to the caterpillar. When a, when a caterpillar, everything that has, that, that, that has, makes a caterpillar a butterfly is already in that caterpillar. Everything that one man that God wants to make is already in you. Wow, yes. Amen. It's in you. Amen. When you give your life over to God, I mean, the Bible says that all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's already in you. It's yeah. in you. When you, when you, when you, man, have the blood of Christ in you, it's in your DNA. Christ's DNA is already in you. It's already in you. Yes, but is. now we have to get it from in you, out of you, so it can produce that change in you. But the process needs to be adhered to. Amen. You, you can't believe in how much people, amen, hate the process. They'll leave or they'll fight on Light or fight, man. But that caterpillar, all he does in the beginning of his life is eat. Yeah. Eat, 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 eat. Yeah. Eat. He just walks around and eats. Tries to get away from birds. <laughs> and he just eats. Why? Because there's going to be a time in his life where he stops eating and he goes on the food that he already ate. Wow. wow. See, when you come into Christ, amen, it's, it's, it's really simple. Christ is carrying you. God is carrying you. As a new convert, man, you believe in everything, man. You were like, man, should I call fire on the Lord? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with me, man. I've man, I've man, man, touch my car. See what happens, man. You get leprosy. Wow. I mean, you're you're on fire, man. Why? Yeah. Because you know God is just like you know you see Tavier, man. You know, man. The only way I can carry that boy at times, man, is me sitting down. Yeah. That's a big boy, man. You know, and, and, and I'm carrying him, I'm carrying him, and best believe, nothing's going to come and harm that boy. Uh -huh. If there was a dog, man, get, the, get out of here. You know, my dog comes and tries to eat, man, get out of here. You know, hey, be careful, you know. You, I'm protected, but sooner or later, that boy's going to have to walk. Yeah. Yes. That process has to start. Amen. So what happens? Okay, man, you're getting too big. You have to learn how to walk. Uh -huh. Now, he may not want to. He may get too tired. But just like Carmelo, Carmelo was a butterball. Carmelo was bigger than Tavier. But Carmelo lost a lot of weight when he started learning how to walk. Wow. Why? Because he started moving. He started, man, realizing that, you know what, I can get places. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to wait for anybody to carry me. Hey. I can go places yeah. now. Amen. I can yeah. walk here, man. I can go to the kitchen and get me something now. Oh, or actually go to the kitchen and ask for something right now. I, I can do that. Yeah. When you start walking, you know, you start hitting the things. You start falling, you start getting, amen, there's a process. The caterpillar, amen, starts, man, all of a sudden finds a branch, finds a, a stem, and he builds, amen, a cocoon around him. And what happens in that cocoon is something so mystical, amen. See, you can't tell me, man, that that is evolution. That's not evolution. A caterpillar that goes, does not go into that little cocoon, a caterpillar, and come out of caterpillar. <laughs> comes out of butterflies. Yeah. You know, wow. try to explain that. Men of horses, hey, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big word for you saying we don't really know. Okay. He goes in there, amen, and he starts surviving on the food that was given, that he was eating on. But there's something else that changes, man. His entire structure changed. He doesn't have those legs anymore. They become antennas. He doesn't, he's not long uh, cylinder-like anymore. He has wings. Now he doesn't eat leaves, he drinks nectar. Even his diet changes. Wow. Everything about that caterpillar has changed through that process. Everything you mean that the, you're going through through that process and change, in your process of change, you're no longer that individual that you came in, but you are now transformed. Yeah. You went from the darkness into his marvelous light. He's chosen you. You're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Amen. Amen. Yes. You're Christ's heirs. Amen. 
You're joint heirs with Christ. You're, you're more than what you can give yourself credit for. Amen. But you have to trust in the process. Yes. You have to wait. You have to make. But here's the thing, amen, uh, and, and, and to wrap it all up, some people, man, lose it in the wait because they don't want to wait so they just become who they are. They don't get rid of anything. They don't change, amen. They don't like pain. Who likes pain? I don't. But man, I need to work out, man. I really do. I got this new job, amen, and they gave me a chair about this high. And I have, you know, and I get on the, you know, the little arms and I'm like pulling myself up and I'm like, oh, God, man. I used to be able to do that with ease. <laughs> I really got to start working out, man. <laughs> and now, man, I'm, I'm pulling, the, the, the chair's got wheels, but I'm pulling myself to my table and I'm like, yes, wow. <laughs> Somebody oil the wheels. <laughs> There's a process that we all go through. You, no one can escape it. Why? Because, man, coming from your civilian life to your military life, your mindset, everything about you has to change because the battles ahead of you, man, are meant for you to be victorious in. Amen. And the ones, amen, even the ones, man, that, that we think are defeats are not. They're called learning experiences. I got... I'll close with this illustration. I got, I got, uh, we were taught uh, this, um, some kind of a self-defense thing. And man, we were, we were really like, some of us were really learning how to fight for the first time, but it's not a fight that can be like an MMA thing. It's a fight to the death, so to speak. You know, you're in the battleground, amen, and it's not one-on-one, -on -one, but you know, it's against everybody here and you're the only one there, you know, it's one of those things. So you have to finish it quick. Anyway, so the thing that uh, they're uh, trying to show me is knife fighting. I failed knife fighting three times. In other words, if it was a real knife fight, I would have died three times. <laughs> Even the instructor was telling me, always carry a gun, dude. <laughs> always carry a gun. I don't understand why he can't get this thing so simple. When he's lashing at you this way, you should do this. And I'm trying to tell him, that's what I'm saying. If he lashes me this way, why don't I just shoot him? Because <laughs> you don't have a gun. It's a knife fight. Who brings a, who brings a, a, a knife to a gun fight? <laughs> I have to learn. I have to go through all kinds of changes, man. I have to go through all kinds of experience. I have to. And what they do is that they have these, these and they put a marker on them or ink. And then by the end of the knife fight against your opponent, they see which one has more than eight spots. Now, without getting into detail, there are certain slices that you can do, amen, that'll, that'll kill the individual because you can hit an artery. And I looked at my uniform and I'm like, mm. <laughs> that was some good slicing, dude. I mean, it was everywhere. And I looked at his uniform, clean as a whistle. <laughs> I missed. Man, I've cut him in the arm, but that's like a paper scratch. Oh. But I have to learn. Yep. And in this process, you have to trust God in this process. Amen. In the waiting, it's an act of wait. Yes, amen. In the process of waiting, man, there's an act of wait. In, in the process, amen, there's going to be pain, but that pain is meant to strengthen you, never to discourage you. Amen. And in the process, amen, there is change. There is change. There is change. There is change. Yes, amen. I'm not, I don't feel it. There is change. Pastor, how do I know that there's change? You're here on a Sunday morning for one. Hey. Amen. You wouldn't even want to be up on Sunday morning. Some of you would be going home at this time yeah. to go to bed. Yes. Some of you, amen, ain't seen the sun on a Sunday morning for over 10 years because you go... You go to sleep, man, when the sun is down, and you wake up when the sun is down. Yes, there's a change. Yes. Trust in the process, guys. Don't be afraid of it. Yes. Don't be afraid of it. Let's bow our heads, amen.